It was recommended to me by my dear friend Julie Blue, who has performed here. And she said, oh, you'll love her. She's great. And I didn't know you were so diverse. But I knew when I came in with my bowl and I saw her bowl, it was going to be a good morning. <laughs> there's only one bowl. Actually, there's two, but only one bowl. So we're talking this month about a wealth revelation. And I know last week you, for those of you who are here, you were delighted with Reverend Cassandra Ray and uh, your experience. I, I don't know Cassandra either, but um, I do hear from people that she's, um, she's very engaging. And so I'm, I'm thrilled that she was here, had time with you. And uh, I wanted to talk today about demanding our good. Now that's a pretty strong statement. And I was hoping that some of you actually recoiled when you read that title. <laughs> because we're here to become divinely uncomfortable. So that we can move out of our mental complacency, right? Because this is about the power that lives within the one mind in which we think, move, and have our being. So it does us no good just to come here on a Sunday and just, you know, just feel nice and leave. I mean, that's important, <laughs> but that's not all what we're here to uh, discover and awaken within ourselves. So someone has to be the person that pushes a bit, and I really think that's my job. Um, what is it the saying is, I, I, uh, I'm not here to be liked, I'm here to be, but I am here to be liked too. So. <laughs> like, I like when you like me, right? I'm, I'm that person too. But demanding our good. Now, you know, as Jesus talked about in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. Really, it's, um, the root is, it, is a, it comes uh, in the Greek language. And ask really does mean claim or demand. You know, it's us that has that different understanding of ask. You know, and, and what we're here to do in our teaching is to know the truth already exists and it is through us that it becomes manifest in our experience and in our material world, right? God can only do for us what God can do through us, right? It, it's, a, it's a reciprocal relationship. It's a partnership. Even though I am using uh, dualistic terms and words to share this with you, we have to because we come from a, a, a long history especially in the Western culture, of believing that we are separate from God. So in order for our intellect to buy it and for our mind to open, I need to talk in language that your mind recognizes and then move into the mystical spiritual truth. So um, don't anyone come up to me after and go, well, you were talking like they're two separate things. There's a reason why I do that, right? Um, demanding our good is not only a way in which we have to approach the truth in order to, to um, feel that presence that we felt today already several times, but it's also a way in which we build our faith and our conviction. You know, demanding is not supplication, it's not beseechment in the old way, it is, um, it is with a conviction that we speak our word, and our words have power. So when we speak our prayer, or our affirmative prayer, or our treatment, or we speak in, in a conversation over a coffee, are we really mindful of what we're saying? Do we um, have a larger view of who and whose we are as we're speaking? No. We don't do that, right? We, it's not our way. When we go home and we take a quiet moment, or when we've had a hairy day and we stop and we say, I'm going to bed. I don't care if it's three o'clock in the afternoon. And you lie down, and all the stuff that's bothering you runs through the head and still, until your body, you start to drop into your body. Interesting, isn't it? Your body, and then your mind slows down and quiets. And then, then that's the time that you can have a, a mindful thought. That's why they say it's really good to meditate when you first get up or before you go to bed. It's to move out of the leaning and the mental attitude that you've carried all your day 
about what uh, is not working or what is in this material world that is irritating or pressing up against you that you don't like and allow it just to wash away from you. But an important thing in this teaching is that you need to lean into another way. You need to discipline and refocus your mind. So all you need to do is replace that energy with a different energy. So that energy that I'm speaking of is something that keeps you separate from God, keeps you from experiencing that, that sweet whole presence that we've just done together. And I might add, so powerfully is it when we're together. Because we don't create in a vacuum. Yes, you know, Emerson says in his essays, uh, one of his essays that I love was spirit, uh, Self Reliance. And he talks about nonconformity as basically the way to be free and to be independent. Uh, but he also talks about interdependence. You know, in independence to our ego and our, our personality self goes, yeah, <laughs> I want to be over here. I don't want to be with that milieu because it, it's pressing up against me and I don't feel good or I don't like what's going on. But the soul knows that it's all good and it's all God. So how do we reconcile that? We have to practice in those spaces that we intentionally provide ourselves uh, so that we can shift our mental atmosphere and how we lean into that, that stuff that presses up against us a lot of the times because of a core subconscious belief that that is exactly who we are underneath it all if we were really to show ourselves. And we need to lean into something that is far greater, much more magnificent. We need to lean into the divinity, which is the truth of who we are, God in, as, and through us. And, and that sometimes feels like a huge jump that we can't make. But we don't have to make it. We are it. We just need to allow it to reveal and rise within us. We don't have to go anywhere. It is right where we are always. Even in our mindset. That we, on some level, choose, based on the beliefs of who we truly believe we are, which is usually unconscious. We just need to uh, let them go. And, 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 um, as we let them go, something else will naturally replace them. Because there is divine order in this universe. There is balance within us always. Our body is always, the intelligence of our body is informing our mind. The intelligence of our mind is informing our body. You know, they're not one thing, they're two things. They're one thing, they're a system. A system. So when we demand our good, we are speaking with conviction not that I demand my Porsche. <laughs> I demand a beautiful new house, blah, 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 blah. Demanding is, yes, yeah, speaking your word with conviction. But the idea of demanding your good, so here we have to define what good is. So is good in your mind when you're praying or affirmatively praying or doing a spiritual mind treatment, is good something that you get? Is it an acquisition? And therefore, is it a, in material form? Is it in experience? Or is it to allow the truth of the spiritual universe, which is, it is infinite. It is infinite in its unformed substance, waiting to be formed by the direction of our knowing and our conviction, is that the good that you're demanding? When you, when you, when we pray, you know, when I was a kid, I, I, I always tried to, I prayed to get out of trouble, that's what I did, you know, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you can relate, it's like, oh, please, God, don't let them find out I did X, Y, Z, or, um, please, God, um, uh, uh, turn their attention elsewhere so they don't notice that I've broken something of grandmothers um, and it was always trying to get out of something trying to escape something and and you know when you try to escape something 
We forget about the something we're trying to escape is right where God is. We don't know that when we're young, right? We could, we don't, we, we sense it when we're really, really, really young. But as we start thinking for ourselves, we don't know that. So we need to come back to that. We need to, to, to demand the good. Have conviction and faith in the real truth. Which is that we have a power within us, a source within us, that is the same power and presence that lives in each and every human being. And that each and every human being has direct access to this power. They don't need an intermediary. And even when we are not focused or pointed toward the truth, the truth is still operating in its fullness and its wholeness and perfection through us as us for our highest good always. Demand that good. Demand that good be present within you, within your mind, within your heart, within your body. And when this starts to be your experience, even though stuff is happening outside of you that may press up against you, that is hard, you bring the presence to it. And somehow it helps you just move through it or be in it. It certainly, you certainly don't need to escape it anymore because you're not escaping anything that lives outside of God, because nothing does. And all of a sudden, you feel the empowerment. You feel the joy. Because you have discovered, through your own love of your own beingness, which is not separate from the love of the God, God, the only God that lives through and in you, you have discovered it, and that is such a deep joy. It means you don't have to go anywhere to find anything, because nothing is lost, and your life and your, the fullness of your life does not live outside of you. That nothing is going to be any better than this moment right here. So that's what you need to demand. It's really a demand you're putting upon, not God, but yourself to know the truth. That you are the good. The great and the powerful. Jeez, I, I just thought of the Wizard of Oz there. The, yeah. the great the little guy in the, yeah, behind the curtain. <laughs> Sorry. I used to be a clown, for some of you who don't know me, so sometimes my mind will travel way over here. Um, not unlike most of you. Do you find that when you're focused on something, and it's, and it's even if it's the truth, you know, you could feel it in your body, but then you can only be there so long. It's like, can you just have a drink of water or take a breath? <laughs> but isn't that interesting? That's the way I look at freedom. We talk about it. We want to be free. We want to be free. We want to be free. But the only way we can be free is to be interdependent. But we don't think of freedom like that, right? Dualistic thinking. The only way we can be free is to learn and practice how to discipline our mind and our thoughts because thoughts create our reality. But most of the time, when we think about freedom and the feeling of freedom, we don't want to think at all. It's got nothing to do with thinking. So it's really a retraining, isn't it? It's a seeing that there isn't two things going on, uh, freedom and um, self-sabotage. There's only freedom. Because that is the infinite potential that lies within you to touch and know in every given moment with every breath. What you choose to do with it will make it seem like you are not free. But that's only because of the thought you've thought. That you've thought. Mm -hmm. It's not the reality. It's not the, the spiritual reality is the truth of our life here in our human body. And I think that that's the human journey. That's why we're here. Oh boy, we sure need to know that right now. Mm. Ursula uh, Le Guin says to use the world word to use the world well to be able to stop wasting it and our time in it. We need to relearn our being in it. 
our being in it, not escape, even in our mind through condemnation and judgment, because that separates us out, but to be in it knowing that goodness, greatness, God, God is good, good is God, is right where you are. Not here, but here. And until we get this, we will never see it there. But we're so practiced at identifying ourselves in relationship with the object in this physical, material world. Right? So it takes practice. It's like, how many here are entrepreneurs? Anyone? Yeah. Have that spirit in you? And you know, what do you spend nights awake thinking of, right? What do you get up in the morning going, oh, how am I going to make my bread today, right? Um, and, and, and whatever you do choose, hopefully will rise as a calling, if not calling even an enjoyment or a passion that you choose to do as your work in the world. But no one's going to be a successful entrepreneur if there isn't a demand for what it is you are going to supply, right? Nobody will be successful. It'll just be a great experience and venture. <laughs> you know, how many of those have you had? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start a business, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Start a business, put lots of money in it, lots of time, lots of sweat, lots of tears. And then you're so exhausted, you can't even see the crest of success if it's even there. So what happens, you take a break, you escape it, get your mind together, and then get a new creative idea and start another business. But you can't create in a vacuum. And that's what we're saying in the science of mind. That there is everything already provided. It's already done. So you need to lean into that. I'm going to close with a, a beautiful piece. Uh, do you know um, David White, the poet? Mm -hmm. W-H-Y-T-E. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, this is what he said. Jeez, I had a lot of them. <laughs> he says, everything is waiting for you. Your great mistake is to act the drama as if you were alone. As if life were a progressive and cunning crime with no witness to the tiny hidden transgressions. To feel abandoned is to deny the intimacy of your surroundings. Surely, even you at times have felt the grand array, the swelling presence, and the chorus crowding out your solo voice. You must note the way the soap dish enables you or the window latch grants you freedom. Alertness is the hidden discipline of familiarity. The stairs are your mentor of things to come. The doors have always been there to frighten you and invite you. And the tiny speaker in the phone is your dream ladder to divinity. Put down the weight of your aloneness and ease into the conversation. The kettle is singing even as it pours you a drink. The cooking pots have left their arrogant aloofness and seen the good in you at last. All the birds and creatures of the world are unutterably themselves. Everything is waiting for you. Demand that your good be made real in your experience, in your mind, your experience, in your life. And you just watch with joy how easy it becomes to be you. <laughs>